Hey friend, in this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you the easiest way to paint 10 more flowers. And if you're like, 10 more flowers, what are you talking about? Where was the rest of the flowers? We did a 10 easy watercolor flower tutorial a few months ago, it was a banger. So we'll link to it in this video to make sure you can go check it out. There's 10 other flowers that you will learn to paint in that video. Amazing. In this tutorial, I'm teaching you everything from a dahlia to a ranunculus flower, peony, sweet peas, uh, easy daisy, aster needle flower, protea, pansy, lily of the Nile, and a daffodil. It's gonna be really fun, really colorful, and a lot of these flowers I've actually never painted before in my entire life. So you get to see me paint something for the first time and uh, pull up reference photos for shape and all of that and talk about shape and dimension and how I paint from basic shapes and without sketching. So if you're ready for these 10 cute and easy flowers in watercolor, let's dive in. Okay, the first flower we're going to paint is a loose style dahlia, similar to the one I have in this painting. It's just gonna be kind of like a really faded loose firework that is actually a dahlia. So easiest way to paint a dahlia, I'm gonna use a size six brush and I'm mixing up this dusty muted uh, rose color. That's like a lot of yellow ochre, some burnt umber and a touch of opera rose. You can look up for reference. If you're not familiar with the dahlia flower, you can look up photos for reference. Um, but I'm pretty familiar with these flowers. I've worked with flowers quite a bit. So, and I'm just refer or I'm just using uh, color palette references that I, I just wanna paint a dusty rose one. But if it doesn't work with the color palette that you're painting a full floral piece in, then obviously you wanna adjust. But lots of reference photos for colors online. So I'm gonna start with some of this pigment on my brush, but mostly water. Make sure you swipe off the excess water from your brush on the edge of your cup so you're not too puddly. And I'm basically going to start with just painting a circle. So I've got a really light blush color here. I wanna make sure it stays wet and I'm just painting a circle for the overall shape of the dahlia. The dahlia is a ball shape, but the petals are like leaves or triangles all tucked in pointing towards the center of this ball. So now that I have my circle, I am going to then point the tip of my brush away from the center of the flower and add these jagged lines. I know this is hard to see, but just making these kind of spears come out of the edge of the circle. making sure each petal is pointing back towards the very center of the flower. So they're not angled kind of off. And this making sure that the ball of this flower stays really wet so that I can go back in and start to add the same color that I mixed up to kind of darken the right side of this flower by adding in these specks. While it's wet, it's going to dry more blurry, which is the effect that I'm going for. We're basically just adding in more dimension with these petals while this is wet. Going back some of, over some of these outer petals to darken them, not all of them though. I'm staying away from this side. I want it to feel like an actual ball. So this is where our highlight is and then this is gonna be where our darker petals are. We can even add in some yellow ochre by itself towards the center. I'm 
And I'm taking a dry brush and kind of just working it in, some of this pigment in a little better so it doesn't dry all puddly and funky. Once this dries, so I'm gonna move on to a few other flowers first, but once this dries, I'm gonna go back on top of some of these darker areas and pull out more petal shapes. But right now I'm just kind of working in where the shadow areas or the darker petals would be before it dries so that there's a nice smooth blend. Some in the lighter area, but not much. This is too like polka dot looking, so I'm going in with a dry brush and I'm gonna blur it out a little bit. Just making some of these petals a little longer. And then I'm gonna add the stem. So I'm gonna do like a darker sagey green using sap green a touch of burnt umber and some Prussian blue. I'm not gonna do too long of a stem cause we need to paint the other flowers, but I'm using my size six brush at about a 25 degree angle away from the paper, mostly water and just a touch of that color I just mixed up and lightly bringing it down like so. And I love when the green fades into this light blush color. That's the beauty of loose watercolor. Then I'm gonna grab that darker color, so less water on my brush, and just add in a little leaf. So if you need help painting leaves, I've got a full series for painting a bunch of different types of leaves, so make sure you go check that out. We'll link it in this video for you little stems around it. Okay, we'll come back to that flower and add some more detail to it. But our next flower is going to be a ranunculus. So pulling up this reference painting I did a few weeks ago, but this style of ranunculus may seem really detailed and really overwhelming, um, but it's really that not that hard. So I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Same size brush, size six brush, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just grab lemon yellow deep, a touch of lemon yellow deep, and that's it on my brush and mostly water. So I've got a lot of water on my brush and a touch of lemon yellow deep. And I'm just gonna start with the center of the flower by creating a little heart. I know you can barely see this because it's just water, but I'm just laying down basically a really small heart and going to then add in C curves around it. You can even just, it's mostly water, but so it's gonna be hard to see, but you can even just um, paint a circle of water like we did for the Dahlia and add in the detail of the petals later with darker color. But I've got basically just a puffy circle with some white space here and there for my ranunculus. Once I have a circle about that big, I'm grabbing some ultramarine violet, burnt umber, and some Mars black for this. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a not a variegated, because that's for leaves, but when ranunculus have double colors, I love those types of ranunculus. Not all ranunculus have the 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 two the two tone. But now I'm gonna start with my size two brush. Grab my size two brush and go in and dark darken the center. We're working in a wet area, so it's gonna blend in, which is fine. And then I'm just pulling out where I see um, 
C curves. So if you don't know how, if you don't know what a ran ranunculus looks like, I highly recommend pulling up a rec uh, reference photo, but they're basically, if I were to paint just outline of the petals, it's basically you start with a circle and there's just a bunch of C curve petals. This is obviously a very basic ranunculus, but there's just a bunch of C curve petals like this that go around and around the center of the flower. So what I'm gonna be doing now with this dark purple is just basically pulling out C curves with dash lines. Um, you don't need to see the petals, but just follow the, the center of the flower and make sure all of your C curves are pointing back to the center of the flower. So like right here is where the edge of the water stops. So I'm gonna go on that. And add in some of this dark purple. And it's obviously still wet, so it's going to add this blur to it, which I'm gonna like for some of it, but I'm not gonna do it for every single petal. And when this dries, we're gonna go back on top of it and add more. So I'm making sure that these lines are really fine. This is just the top edge of every petal that we're pulling out right now. And once this dries, we'll go back in and make it crisper. Up here, I'm even floating on top of just paper. I don't have any color underneath. And I'll go back in with a darker color for the center before I move on to the next flower and come back for details when it's dry. I just wanna darken this a little bit more. I'm gonna use that same green though before I move on for the stem. Little brown, little sap green, little Prussian blue. A lot of water, so it's not too dark. We've got subtle color for our petals. And we just have a leaf going behind that guy. Okay, next flower we're gonna paint is an easy peony everyone's favorite flower. I'm gonna add a little bit more opera rose to this dusty rose mixture I have up here. I usually paint peonies like super bright and just bold colors, but peonies come in a wide variety of colors. I like their really pale uh, corally color. So we're gonna do that one. Maybe a touch of cadmium orange, just a touch. I'm gonna start with the darkest amount of color on my brush, so thicker amount of color, less water. And I'm gonna use the side or belly of my brush about 35 degree angle away from the paper. And let's go this way. And I am going to create a V shape with petals that go up and down like this. So we've got a V shape or a cone shape, whatever you wanna call it. And then from here, I'm going to slightly lighten that color by washing off some of the pigment in my cup. And I'm going to pull up a petal on either side of that cone shape, always making sure to point back to the center of the flower where the stem would be. Then I'm going to darken that mixture of pigment that I have and pull out petals that are pointing towards me. So start with little to no pressure on the tip of your brush then fan away. Fan, 
pressure and just creating these upside down teardrop shapes. So we've got cone shape, cone shape upside down, but with fatter petals. And then more spikies poking out. Petals have, or peonies have loads and loads of petals. So we're adding in the top half of petals poking out their heads out here. And then some more behind it that are lighter. So I'm lightening my brush and using the side of my brush to do the same type of stroke. Really fluff it up, up there. Let's do a yellow green for the stem, lemon yellow deep and sap green. Peony leaves are really long. Again, check out my leaf series if you need help with some leaves. Little peony guy, there we go. Okay, so next flower we're gonna paint is gonna be some sweet peas. Sweet peas also come in a few different colors. We're gonna paint this purpley color um, using cobalt blue and opera rose mostly. Bring it in here. Maybe some Prussian blue. And a touch of burnt umber so it's not so bright. All right, so for our snap pea, I'm gonna use my size six brush and about a 65 to 75 degree angle on my uh, paintbrush away from the paper. And I'm imagining my stems, sweet pea stems are really curvy, wonky, lots of curly cues. So I'm just kind of imagining where the stem is going and painting these heart-shaped flowers around this imaginary stem. Some of them are lighter hearts than others. Some have more pink in the mix or more blue. So the overall shape of this flower is a heart or a cone, and we have one very blue one, so we're gonna make sure we balance that out and bring in some of that blue down here. Now we can paint in our stem using sap green and lemon yellow deep. I'm gonna add in some curly moments. And add more flowers to fill it out.
Now for a daisy, I'm gonna come up here to my burnt rose color and add some more aqua rose and a touch of burnt umber. So I'm gonna start with mostly water on my brush and just pick up a tiny bit of this burnt pink color. And I'm gonna use a really slanted hold on my brush, like about 25 degrees away from the paper on my size six brush. And I'm going to press, drag, and then let it um, stop dragging. <laughs> and do that around this imaginary circle for my daisy flower. I'm trying to get roughly the same length and width on each petal. Going back over some if they're not looking right. Trying to work relatively quickly because I'm gonna go back on top of these petals with some darker color. Squeeze in more petals. Then we'll go in with burnt umber with just a touch of this pink. And boop, 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 boop. Which is the technical term. Boop. Then I'm just gonna grab water on my size six brush, but not too much. And gently pull in some of that burnt umber into the center of the flower. I'm gonna go back over this bulb area once it's dry with dark, darker burnt umber dots. But this will be our base of that. We just kind of snuck it in there. Little stem, little daisy guy. Okay, so Aster Tall Needles, I'm not super familiar with these flowers. We didn't have them in my yard growing up and I've never painted one before this video, the drum roll. Um, but they're really like spiky. They have really thin petals and the overall shape of the Aster Tall Needle is similar to a Dahlia. So it's a circle shape, ball shape, uh, with really spiky flowers. So I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna add more operosis. I don't want it to be this bright because every other flower on here is pretty muted. Just wanna make it cohesive looking but I'm just mixing opera rose and burnt umber together. And then I'm gonna grab water with just a touch of this pigment on it. We're gonna paint a circle. And then we're gonna grab this darker color and this is where the highest part of my circle is going to be. We're just going to, while it's still wet, use the tip of the brush to go around and pull out these spikies. So right here is where all the petals should be kind of pointing down and then they start to curve up right about here. Fluff, fluff it up, adding in some yellow for little hints of other colors here and there. Okay. 
There we go. Now for another spiky flower that I've never painted, Protea. Love Protea flowers. These are very like desert bohemian style wedding flowers. Uh, but we're gonna paint one of these. I think they're called King Proteas with this like crown on it. They have these type of African Proteas that are just like wiry looking. Uh, but these King Proteas, I think they're called Double King, King Protea are just really cool. So there's a sphere or oval sit, sitting in the middle of this like goblet shape right here that we're going to paint the goblet first with these scales of petals. So I'm gonna, similar to this photo, start with more lemon yellow deep and just a touch of this kind of rosy blush color. So I've got my oval or pill shape right here that I'm just adding in the base first, making sure there's white space between each scale or petal, whatever we're calling it. So we see like it's individual uh, petals, but making sure that we're just make imaginary, we have an imaginary um, oval just sit or egg sitting right here. So we're going around and covering that shape. And now I'm going to add more pink to it. Might even go on top of some of these yellow ones and add the pink to it. But we're going to sit right in between those. I'm just placing my brush on the paper. Not too complicated with this stroke. And we've got where the ball is peeking out here. For this ball though, I'm just going to be doing these really thin, darker pink lines that if we were to picture half of a ball right here that just basically cover that and point towards the center of it. So here's the center of my ball and I'm just pulling out these C-curves. Now I'm mixing up sap green, a touch of Prussian blue, and some burnt umber for leaves that are gonna frame this. Well, actually, let's start with the stem first. So I'm gonna do some burnt umber and a touch of that green color, but mostly water. So a lot of water and a touch of that stem color. And they've got these thicker stems. And I'm gonna grab this greenish, bluish, smoky color, whoops, and a lot of water. And we're gonna blend these leaves. Some leaves are going behind the flower. Then I'm gonna grab a dry brush and soak up some of that green that's on the stem to make it less blurry. Maybe go into stem a little more for brown. Protea. Now let's do a pansy. Pansies are so fun and so cute. We're just gonna be painting these kind of three clover looking flowers. 
and adding in with wet and wet some darker color towards the center and on the outer edges of the petal. So I'm going to grab my size 6 brush, going up here again with this dusty rose color, but I'm going to add more. Actually, let's mix it up and do blue. We got a lot of dusty rose. Let's do cobalt blue by itself. So just a touch of cobalt blue and a lot of water. And I am going to paint in one petal here. I'm just kind of curving and looping around. Another petal that they're all connected at the center. And then from here, I'm grabbing Prussian blue and dotting, adding dots around the center of the flower and the top edge. of the petals. Then we'll go in with some yellow ochre and a touch of lemon yellow deep and add in the center. I'm gonna paint one more pansy. For this neighboring pansy, I'm just gonna use water on my brush and touch that a little bit. do more purple for this one. Dot around the center, dot around the edge. Next is a lily of the Nile, agapanthus flower. These flowers remind me a lot of my childhood. My neighbor's house had a bunch of these in their yard. I'm gonna start with a really light wash of cobalt blue. So just a touch of cobalt blue and a lot of water on my brush. And kind of similar to this aster needle situation, except the petals are gonna be like little teardrops. So I'm gonna start with really thin stroke, little to no pressure on my brush, and then press and lift. Let's do a darker one. Point towards the center of this flower, which is a ball shape right here. Thin, press, thin. Some are more curved than others, but I'm making sure to just dance around this ball shape here. These petals right here in the center are, or yeah, petals. You're maybe just seeing the tops or the side. But everything is, we're imagining this ball. So all these petals are connected to that ball and framing it somehow. They're actually not petals, they're like little mini flower buds because they all open up eventually and have little, little flowers. I have a Lily of the Nile flower, realistic flower in my book, Everyday Watercolor Flowers. So if you wanna know how to paint this in a more realistic style, We'll link to that in the description of this video so you can check it out.
little firework. This is the center of the flower, so my stem is going to be right through here. And we've got all of these stems connecting to these little flowers. So I'm not adding in all of them, but I am going to add in some. Okay, and last but not least is going to be a daffodil. So when we think daffodils, we think those yellow flowers, but I'm gonna do the one where there's like a corally red center. And the center of a daffodil is a, like a, a cone shape um, with star-shaped petals pointing back to that cone shape. So I'm mixing up cadmium orange and scarlet lake for the center of this daffodil. And I'm going to use a mostly vertical handle on my brush and just kind of dot in. This is the top of that circle shape of the daffodil or cone. So we're viewing it from top down on that cone shape. And I'm just gonna grab a lot of water and a touch of lemon yellow deep and start to add in a star shape with petals. So I'm going to pull in some of that center color. And basically these petal shapes are like ovals or uh, leaves, <laughs> not ovals at all. And making them um, kind of dance around. this shape here. Like so. Might go in and add some more lemon yellow deep to some of these. Or from the side. On the side, it's kind of like a really low bowl shape. Now we're ready to go back up here and add some of the details to some of these flowers. I'm gonna start with my dahlia. Grab some opera rose, some yellow ochre, and some burnt umber. Trying to match this base color, but just be a little bit darker to add in your details. And if you need, you can pull up reference photos of dahlias, but I'm just going in and adding in just a few details, like little shadows on some of these petals. They're really fluffy, triangle-shaped petals. And making sure most of my shadows or detail color is staying on the right side because that's where it's going to be darkest. Not getting too detailed. This isn't realistic style tutorial. Just a little on that side. Not much. I 
And then Ranunculus, grabbing that dark purple. Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Violet, Touch of Mars Black. And adding in these like petal crease details with my size two brush. Just barely using the tip. Some shorter strokes, some longer ones spaced out, closer together. So even simple flowers require some patience sometimes if you want the outcome to be bomb. But this doesn't require too much skill, it just requires patience. All we're doing is we're painting little dashes, just making sure that they're C-curves around the center of the flower. Let's see, and now that same color I'm gonna use for the center of this daisy. And similar to the dahlia, I'm just gonna have dots around the right side of the flower. Might add some thin detail to this long aster needle situation. Just thin. Spiky strokes. And we're just gonna add it to right here because this is where the highlight of that ball is. It's just like high school art class when you were shading circles and adding dimension to boxes or whatever. This is a circle shape. The sun is hitting right here. I want it to look faded right there, so I'm not gonna add these dark lines. I'm just gonna accent some of these outer petals. So there you go, 10 easy watercolor flowers. We, this is the second 10 easy watercolor flowers that we've done. Make sure you check out the first for a few other ones, but these are, except for the peony, different flowers. I don't always paint these uh, types of flowers in my big floral compositions, so it's always good to practice other types of things that you're not comfortable with. I'd never painted this aster needle before. I rarely ever paint dahlias, um, never painted daffodils like this before, proteas. So always try new things, but always break it down into its basic shapes because that is gonna inform you on where the petals are gonna be pointing, how they should form around the, the stem and the actual form of the flower. There you have it. So much fun. Let me know in the comments below which was your favorite of the 10 flowers um, for you to try or just when looking at in the tutorial, which was your favorite in these 10 flowers. Make sure you check out the other tutorial where I show you the other 10, if you haven't yet, we'll link it here. Make sure you're subscribed and the bell notification is hit so you turn on notifications so you don't miss a tutorial from this channel. They're all bangers, they're all awesome, and I don't want you to miss out in all of the, the feeds and the algorithms. It's so easy to miss tutorials these days. Also, we just recently launched a Patreon channel where you can access all of these tutorials ad-free for just $2 a month, and you get early access to those videos. We also have additional tiers in our Patreon channel where we are doing live monthly classes and Patreon only tutorials. So make sure you go check out the Patreon that we just launched. It's going to be pretty bomb. Also, if you're just wanting ad free content, all you have to do is pay $2 a month to access the ad free content and early. So hope you love this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video.